Hey guys, Chris here. In today's video, we are doing the 10 to 80% state to charge charging speed test in the Audi e-tron 55. In this test, we put the manufacturer's claim charging speed, their maximum claim speed, the peak claim speed to the test from 10 to 80% state to charge. We also measure the time it takes to go from 10 to 80. And we also measure what I think is most important, which is the average charging speed, because anybody can claim a peak speed and peak speed really doesn't matter, right? Because you know, you can hit that peak speed and then you're down again. And most EVs you hit that and then you're down to a lower speed. What is interesting is what is your average charging speed from something like 10 to 80% state to charge? Because that really tells you how fast a car will charge and why we're doing the 10 to 80% state to charge. Well, in my opinion, that is the most relevant for going on a long trip. So after a few hours of driving, you stop at a quick charger, a, an HPC charger, a lightning charger with around 10% state to charge. You might have a little less, you might have a little more, but around 10% state to charge. And then you want to go to around 80% state to charge. Again, you might go to a little bit less, you might go to a little bit more, but most cars start throttling at 70, 80 or 90% state to charge, meaning that above those percentages, the cars will most likely charge slow. And even this Audi e-tron will start to throttle at around 80% state to charge. And this car is very unique because it has a flat charging curve, unlike any other EV on the market today, which will and should give it a high average speed. But it is cold outside. It's minus 10 degrees Celsius here on the display here. And this car has been stationary for almost a week because I have been driving that Tesla Model 3 long range and I still have that car. So I picked this car up about one and a half hour ago. I've depleted the battery from uh, around 77% state to charge down to just below uh, 30. But I'm going to take it on the motorway and you know try to generate as much heat as possible. And the way I do that is that I go motorway speeds and then I also do yo-yo driving, which is acceleration run after acceleration run, which will also, you know, generate heat within the battery pack. And the reason we're doing that is because a hot battery will be able to take quick charging. So the hotter the battery, the faster the car will be able to charge. So that is what I'm going to do now. So I'm going to take the car on the motorway, deplete it down to 10% state to charge, and then I will meet you up after the charging session to look at the results, to look at the charge curve, and also look at the charging session. Okay guys, I'm done with the charging session. The results are in, and as you can see behind me, the sun has now set. And well, from the title, from the thumbnail of this video, you guys knew this before I knew this because I just, I just found out. But, and I kind of knew, I kind of knew, of course, because I've had this car for, well, five months. I've done almost 15,000 kilometers. I've done countless of videos on this car. And if you haven't seen any of those videos, I would highly recommend you guys to subscribe to the channel, give this video a thumbs up also. It really does help me. It really does help the YouTube algorithm to push my videos to more people, meaning I am more motivated to make more videos. I can spend more time and spend the time to make them as high quality as possible. So that is super appreciated. But yeah, as I said, from the thumbnail, from the title, this is the king of charging speed. There's nothing close to it at the moment, or maybe a Porsche Taycan, maybe a Porsche Taycan. And also, you know, uh, previous model years of the Tesla Model 3, but I haven't tested those yet. And I haven't tested those in minus 10 degrees Celsius. And the 2021 Model 3 long range with the new LG battery pack really did disappoint me, guys. I was really disappointed about that car. And yes, a Tesla Model 3, you know, when you consider the charging speed and then the consumption, that can go further on a charge, meaning the real charging speed, you know, kilometers per hour or miles per hour in charging will be maybe higher than in this car. Uh, but, you know, that is not the test we are doing today. That's something the Norwegian high speed run, which takes into consideration consumption and charging speed to see how fast you can travel. This is all about charging speed, period, and average charging speed. So this as an EV platform, this battery pack, the tech Audi have put into this car, where they have put the money, this might just be the best EV platform when it comes to charging 
at the moment. Yes, the e-tron is super, super thirsty, but put this tech, put this into something like the size of a Model 3. You know, this is on the MLB or MEB platform Evo, MLB Evo platform. The Audi A4 is built on the same platform. The Audi A5 is built on the same platform and also the Lamborghini Urus and the Bentley Bentayga. There are a whole bunch of vehicles built on this platform. And it's just exciting for me to just imagine what other cars Audi can build besides a thirsty e-tron because I'm pretty sure if they built a Tesla Model 3 competitor, something like an A4 size with this tech, this there wouldn't be any competition. I mean, this would just, it, the Tesla wouldn't be better. That's my whole point. It wouldn't be better. And we're gonna go to the results now because the results are amazing. And I'm going to overlay the video while going through. So we, I connected at about six or 7% state of charge. And we immediately at 7% state of charge got uh, 118 kilowatts. We immediately got that speed. And then uh, once you know we were connected, the longer and longer, you know, in opposition to every other EV, the speed climbed here. So at 18% to state of charge, we were at 130 kilowatts. And then we got to 30% state of charge, and then the speed had climbed to 144 kilowatts. And then 50% state of charge, 147 kilowatts. And then at this point, I was like, okay, good job, Audi. It's minus. 10 degrees Celsius outside. I, the car's been stationary for, you know, almost a week. I've been driving it only for a few hours and I did the yo-yoing as I do in every other car. I did that in the E2008. I did that in the uh, long range Tesla Model 3 and also the XC40, so that's no excuse. And then we get to 69% stated charge and we're charging at 153 kilowatts. 153. Audi claimed this can take 150 kilowatts. We're gonna get back to that. And then firstly at 79% state of charge, we start to throttle, but at 80% state of charge, we are still charging at 131 kilowatts. <laughs> Seriously guys, I'm mind blown. And did I turn off the ignition? Why did I do that? Oh, it's getting cold in here. I ran the whole test with the ignition, with the heater, with everything off so I wasn't skewing the results. But once I got to 153 kilowatts, I got, started to get a bit suspicious because the heater was off and I was like, this car can't take more than 150. So I turned on the ignition to just to, to, to check the, uh, the gauge cluster here. And then we were getting 146 kilowatts. And then I looked at the charger and we were getting, I mean, we were getting 147 kilowatts. And then I looked at the charger, it was delivering 149. So two kilowatts, I think goes into heating the battery while charging because that is what is unique and special about this Audi e-tron is that it has some amazing battery management where it will actually heat up the battery while you are charging. So there's no preheating before you get to a charger. You can't preheat the battery. The only way to heat it is drive and yo-yoing. But once you are connected to the charger, it will, it seems like it's pulling around two kilowatts to heat the battery and then it can just ramp up that speed. And that means even at 153 kilowatts, if you subtract two kilowatts, we're still charging at 151 kilowatts. <laughs> Mind blown. There is a new EV, there's a new king when it comes to charging. And that's what I'm saying, if they put this tech into something like a an, an Audi A4, a Tesla Model 3 size car. That would be very, very, very interesting because you would get the efficiency and probably it, it wouldn't be as efficient as a Model 3. Let, let's get real. Tesla make the most efficient EVs on the market. They have the most efficient drivetrain, drive train, the most efficient aerodynamics and also the most efficient uh, battery and battery management. So you're, but, but even though if it was 10 or 15% less efficient with this charging speed and up to 80% state of charge, I'm, I'm mind blown. I'm, I'm, I'm sh surely, I, I really do think that this battery pack has more potential. I don't think they're, they're taking out the full potential out of this battery pack. That is just my honest opinion. So let's go to the charging curve because this is where this car is just different from every other car. Look how flat it is. 
it's super flat. We start at 118 and it just climbs and climbs and climbs and climbs and climbs to 79% state to charge. Our average charging speed from 10 to 80% is 143.8 kilowatts. 143.8 kilowatts in minus 10 degrees Celsius. That is insane. That is insane. I have nothing else to say. Yeah, we charged, uh, so here's the math. Sorry guys, we charged 25 minutes from 10 to 80%. 25 minutes, 25 minutes. We spent 37 minutes in the Model 3 just two days ago. We were delivered uh, 59.94 kilowatt hours and 25 minutes is 0.4167 hours. Poor 0.4167 hours. You take the kilowatt hours delivered, divide it by the time, you get the average speed 143.8 kilowatt hour, kilowatts. That is the math. So guys, I have nothing else to say. I love this car. It's the best car I, I have ever owned. And uh, besides the consumption, high consumption, it's just co co consist consistently charges super fast. It doesn't matter. If you get to a charger and it's cold and you just get 69 kilowatts because it's been stationary for two weeks and you just go right to the supercharger, after charging for 10 or 20 minutes, it will be at above 100 kilowatts, maybe 120, 130. That is my experience because the battery management, the heat management in the battery is just amazing. So guys, let me know what you think in the comment section below. Let me know what you think. Do you think this car is crap? Well, if you do, let me know because after this, I don't know how you can think this car is crap. So guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please drop me a thumbs up down below. And for more car content, as always guys, please subscribe. See you guys later and goodbye.